<laughs> okay, let me go ahead and start over. And uh, it, apparently everything messed up right off the onset. We're not in the right order. Brent and Andy are swapped. Is that it? Okay. Oh, we're going to be Andy? Heck yeah. Cool. And then what you missed as we were sat there talking You're for such a, sweetheart. Uh, a, a, a while, I, I, I wanted to clarify. <laughs> Essex County is the name of the county. We said last week it was Maloney County. That's not true. I'm not going to explain why again because it was actually a bit embarrassing. We, we used to think it was baloney, but somehow we were wrong. <laughs> right. Right. Full of baloney. Oh my god, it even just plays right into the narrative already. <laughs> like the meta thinking. Um, and then I wanted to focus up to um, obviously uh, one of our players is absent today. Um, Henry Fitzgerald is an important character of the story. We have a good narrative reason as to why he will be absent for this first beat. Um, but then focusing up, um, Otmar Pinette um, is the character we'll be focusing on first. It's the middle of summer. The sun is high in the sky, a merciless ball of heat. Uh, you feel scorched by the time you reach the bus. Um, halt in front of Osborne's Drugstore at this town. It's a relief to put down your heavy cases and take off your hat for a moment if you're a hat wearer. Um, presumably it's the fashion of the time. So, yeah, you fan your face. It's been a long summer in your hometown back, um, you know, in New Orleans. Um, and uh, it hasn't been a great summer, so the promise of this information, the promise of this this uh, research uh, is definitely something that has kind of grasped you, um, you know, by the mind. Um, and it's dragging you across country. The motor car, or rather a uh, carriage, is uh, a simple one, um, bear with me here, and the trip has actually had you transported in a couple of different means, uh, not just by motor carriage, but also by uh, train in some points. Um, it's definitely kind of back and forth a bit because the trip isn't very direct. Um, and a lot of companies are working on laying new rail, um, also new highways, especially here in New England. Very, very popular, the process. Um, it's kind of where it all boomed out from. Um, and yeah, you find yourself in this very small town, which is quite a distance away from where you want to be. Um, you're alone. You do not have anybody with you. The uh, motor... Um, carriage is, you know, full, um, and has been, uh, your trip here initially to this town, uh, was by train, so you're di disembarking that and entering into a motor carriage, which should take you up, um, the 20, um, you can see the red route, um, through to Boston. From Boston, you're hoping to get, um, another motor carriage from the same company that, um, has been kind of moving you along. A company called Brahmin and Costello. They're based out of Plymouth, New Hampshire. Um, and uh, yeah, this is what your coach ticket will look like. If you close the handout, the viewers on Church will have to see the map. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm just mostly kind of switching around uh, handouts. But yeah, um, the red route, as I explained, I don't have the whole thing um, up for the viewers. But, um, yeah, so you'll be heading to Boston and then up to um, Bico. So, in town, is there anything in particular that you're wanting to get? Any kind of uh, loose ends? And then also describe your character um, in the setting that I've described. Uh, yeah. Um, he would, of course, kind of stumble around town, not really knowing where to go at the first part. Um, uh, for him course first thing you would always want to do after a long ride is find something to drink maybe something to eat um but for the looks of the guy he is slightly above average in looks he's nothing extremely special he's a southern boy who worked near the docks for most of his life um pretty well built pretty tall for the area he's noticed that, that he doesn't really fit well in the carriages and such being of his height for the day um He's more around the, like, 6'1 range. Um, he dresses nicely, but not overly done. Again, he comes from a very hot part of the, t the country where you wear co very little cotton. You would wear mostly, especially around the docks, like, uh, hemp items and such. 
and straw, like a straw hat even, just so you can get it dirty, you can use this item. He looks very practical for what he's meant for. Okay. Um, and around his neck, you would see just a small necklace with a little skull that's tucked away because he knows up here it's not as widely accepted. Okay. And, um, yeah, as I mentioned, the uh, motor carriage is basically waiting for you. Um, it looks like the um, majority of the folks who were kind of um, there uh, have already boarded. Uh, you can see that they have put their luggage up on top. Um, a guy who uh, looks like he's, uh, you know, a bit scrawny, you know, probably in his 50s, uh, stained dress shirt um, with a bus company emblem on the pocket. Um, he has kind of dark socketed eyes, uh, yellowed fingers, um, rolling a cigarette, kind of looks over at you and just dismissively says, well, where to? And kind uh, of holds his hand out as if he's expecting you to hand your ticket over. Yeah, and I hand, I do. Uh, just so he, we don't have to have much of a conversation. Um, takes the ticket, looks I, at it, and uh, kind of looks at your luggage and, uh, kind of gestures towards the, um the roof of the vehicle, uh, puts the ticket back in your hand, gives the cigarette a lick, a kind of nice tightening, and then goes to light it, and says, uh, lug your Drax up there. Almost like he expects you to deal with it. What is your, uh, size? My size is 85. Yeah. He is yeah, not. no, I, yeah, I would also want to do it myself. I would have things in my luggage, books and such, that I have brought up for myself that I would rather not have some guy just try to chuck on top of something. I would very neatly place it up there. You could say it, poor dude. <laughs> some sort of some sort of peasant. <laughs> Ooh, with your yellowed fingers, get out of here! Don't touch my shit. Um, so yeah, you put your stuff up um, onto the um, coach as he smokes his cigarette. He kind of gestures for you, um, like almost just silently, to kind of enter into the bus. Um, upon doing so, you would note that um, there are folks present that are kind of in there, but they're mostly, like, the best way to describe the people that are kind of in this bus with you is they're very industrial looking. They look like they have, like, a, you know, laborer's garb, right? Um okay. You've got your um, overalls. You've got your, um, you know, blue collared shirts. They're very much just common clay folk, and they all look like they um, have spent a lot of time in one city or another. Um, it's just a certain vibe about them gives you that they are city folk, uh, grizzled city folk. Um, okay. But they don't seem to bug you. Um, they all kind of just talk amongst themselves. Some of them seem to be kind of grouped together. Um, and what you hear mostly is that they are heading to Arkham, which for you means that most of the people you're seeing here will probably leave your company in this leg of the journey um, at Boston. They'll go on the uh, 22 and you'll go on the three or the one, sorry. I can't read maps sometimes. But um, as far as that goes, there is one person towards the back who stands out. Um, she appears to be um, the only... Well, she's the only woman on the bus. Um, she also appears to be traveling alone, which is a bit disconcerting in this day and age. Um, but she also appears to be dressed very much down. Most women will kind of dress, you know in a very feminine fashion, but she seems to be being uh, wearing like a very kind of uh, simple, made-for-function skirt um, and um, kind of a, a light jacket over a simple blouse. Her hair is kind of pulled back um, and uh, looks like she has uh, needles kind of stuck inside of the bun of her hair. Um, she very much uh, kind of keeps to herself, um, but at one part of the journey, um, somebody does try and kind of uh, talk to her in a less than talking fashion uh, and uh, 
a few seconds later, if you don't pay too much attention, you hear kind of a loud thud as that guy seems to hit the floor of the bus um, in between the seats very suddenly and very loudly. So she seems to be a person who does not um, take anything from anyone, from what you can see. I will say that if you don't, obviously engaging her on the bus would be a, a strange thing, but if you want to try, yeah. you can. Uh, no, I think I would look back to see if I could like, recognize anything about her that would make her obviously different than the rest of the bus goers. Like, I, I'm um, trying to think of the exact name of the picture. What's her name? Um, it's something the welder. Um, you know what I'm talking about? The I think it's Susie the welder. Susie the welder. Yeah, the, the, the World War II propaganda. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's her, basic Rosie. 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 Rosie, Rosie the Riveter? Rosie the yeah, Riveter. Rosie the Riveter. Not a welder. <laughs> Anyways, her. It's basically yeah. her, but in the outfit I described. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, she um, uh, yeah keeps to herself. Nobody else bugs her after that. Um, the guy develops a, a pretty meaningful black eye. Um, and then once you arrive in Boston, there are several other uh, motor carriages that are arriving at the, about the same time. And everyone's kind of disembarking theirs at the same time, kind of moving very quickly towards platforms. Um, once there, are you just continuing on with your journey or do you want to try and engage with anybody, um, namely her, uh, or attempt to engage with her, rather, is the more important part? My first quick question would be, who's getting the bags off the top? Is it, are we doing it ourselves? It looks or? like, it looks like folks are moving up to do it themselves. Um, okay. since you're focused on that, um, and not in particular, like rushing after her, it doesn't seem like from what you can see, she goes for the carriage or goes for anything up there. That's, I was going to ask if I could, if I could pick mine down and ask her if I could grab hers, but the, since the, that's not. I would say the point that you are going to have to make the roll I'm about to make you to uh, make you roll. You see that she has a kind of simple like duffel bag or side bag um, mm -hmm. that she had kind of tucked under the seat, and when she, like everybody disembarked, she pulled it out and she was on her way. So go ahead and make me a. Oh, it's gonna be a track. Oh no. Okay. I wish I could do it for you, buddy. Yeah, mine's pretty bad, but let's see what happens. Ooh, ooh, yeah, not even close. You lose her in the crowd pretty quick. Um, as you're kind of dealing with these uh, these laborer guys who are like gruffly saying, okay, yeah, uh, this year's, and they're pointing at the bag that you specifically want to get down, <laughs> and you're kind of like, well, well, be careful with that, and you just say, like, set it down, and then as you're kind of looking over your shoulder, she's... Whoosh, yeah, into the smoke and the dust and everything that's kind of present there. The train station's nearby. It's all basically just like an area where everybody... It's like a, a central station, right? Um, yeah. And uh, your stuff is not accosted. You don't have any altercations with anybody. Everybody seems to be pretty pleasant, you know, um, mm -hmm. common clay folk. You get your bags and you start kind of making your way to the next leg of the journey, which is a less descript, not as exciting motor carriage ride up to Baiko. Cutting from you. Sitting in your office at about the same time, um, mm -hmm. Arthur Haynes, PhD. Uh, you reside in Arkham, spelled with no H. Um, it's a pretty prominent city, which we have a full map of, and we'll be engaging with more directly after the first uh, stretch of our journey. Um, but uh, that said, um, you know that the individual known as Henry Fitzgerald is um, to arrive in a couple of days, but you feel that you can get some information prior to that by just going to Bico yourself. Do you think that Arthur Haynes would be a person of means and he... What's your credit score? My credit rating is... 
is, is, is... No, what's your credit score? <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> no. <laughs> what? 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 Wait, what? I'm joking. What's your credit rating? I was doing a bit. It depends <laughs> on if you're going to keep playing this game or not. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, need to My know. credit rating is 35, which puts me well within yep. the, like the, the normal. So if you want to have a car, you could have a car. Yeah, sure. I would say I don't have a fancy car. It's no Fitzgerald like car. Yeah. Right. I have a pretty basic car. And you don't have a driver. And um, right. you're a competent enough driver, but you're probably not someone. Do you have? That's a skill, right? Yeah, driving but is, yeah. so so you would only really want to ask for, for that skill if there's something right. going on that's out of the ordinary. Hard driving, right? Like if hard you're driving. Yeah, and so or... Arthur Granny drives. So Got don't it. worry about that. Perfect. Typical professor mentality. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Just like me. Me too. <laughs> I'm not a professor, but I do drive like one. Uh, so you make your own, you make your way on over to Bico and um, so the idea is that I've got this artifact yeah and you, I want and, and and I know Henry might know something about it but in Henry's absence I'm going to go to Bico just see if I can learn more yeah you've got the mirror you know who you got the mirror from you also know who made the mirror and who mm -hmm. owns the property of or mm -hmm. who, the mm -hmm. property of where the mirror was made uh, so the mirror was made by uh, someone, the last name Revels, I believe I gave yep. you the name. Gabe, Gabriel. Correct. Gabriel. Um, and uh, he has a farm in Baiko, um, mm -hmm. or had a farm in Baiko. His relatives, from your research, no longer own the property, and that property is now owned by an individual named... Raymond? Nope. Uh, oh, Richard? Nope. Adam Godding? Adam Wait. Godding. So their family estate is no longer a part of the Revels' properties. It was sold to someone else. Okay. And that person's Thanks. name is Adam Godden. Um, okay. And other than uh, the fact that you can see that he um, has been to the university before, um, you really don't know anything about this uh, Adam individual. A lot about Gabriel. Not so much about his offspring. Not mm. noteworthy, nothing that would have been kind of okay. documented. Um, that said, uh, the trip to uh, Baiko uh, brings you past Rose's Corners, um, along the uh, Aylesbury Fields, um, along the Miskatonic River, um, and then north up towards Baiko. Once you cross over the Miskatonic and start your way into the kind of farmlands that you know are a part of Baiko City proper, uh, you see something that um, is a bit strange. You, you don't see too many people walking around out here um, in the fields. Most people kind of work their property and aren't really walking alongside the roads, the highways here. However, uh, you do see a guy um, on the side of the road. Um, he appears to be wearing a kind of beaten up, uh, frayed at the edges suit um, with the um, kind of, you know, leather uh, elbows um, and uh, thick kind of horn rimmed glasses. Um, just a very um, out of place individual. And uh, as you're starting to approach, he notices, kind of turns his attention towards the vehicle and gives out the age old and I believe still used in this early day of the automobile, thumbs up for hitchhiking. You do not have to accept him as a passenger. You can pass him by, but if you'd like to accept a stranger into your vehicle, you certainly can. What does, what does this person look like? Can we have a description? Suit, frayed edges, leather kind of elbow. Okay, you on yeah, the, you mentioned yeah. all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay, then, so... Facially, horn rim glasses with thick lenses, and he kind of has a disheveled, but like, kind of like a, a couple of weeks out from a clean shave, if you get what I'm saying. Yeah, Arthur would think to himself, oh, it seems like I've had colleagues like these for years, I know them. <laughs> he, he must be of some sort of an academic. He gives a auga of his uh, Model T and pulls over and waves the man in. 
he uh, comes over. Um, once he enters into the vehicle, he has a very strange scent about him. Um, it is um, out of character. He smells like weed. Whether or not Arthur Haynes knows what that means is up to you. Um, but yeah, he has a very pungent smell, aroma of marijuana about him. Um, that said, describe Arthur Haynes sitting in his vehicle, welcoming the man into his car to us. So Arthur is in his early 30s. He has uh, kind of brownish hair. It's neatly trimmed. Um, he's wearing a suit, uh, not a fashionable suit, but um, a well-worn one with a jacket, uh, again, well-worn with a one of those patches on the on the on the elbows again well worn it's very neat and tidy but uh it's not nothing fancy he's got a worn brown leather satchel uh, out of which you could see on the back seat spill some books and journals and uh pens and things like that um yeah uh he goes, he's kind of thinnish uh mm -hmm. and 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 slightly nervous yeah. Um, so, would your character, just for us, kind of knowledge-wise, would he be familiar with the scent? Do you think, or is it just something strange to him? Yeah, I mean, he would think to himself, "Ugh, is this? Is he a student? I, I, I this is like down in the student union." <laughs> he says, uh, "You would see that he's a bit older himself, uh, probably in mm -hmm. his early thirties as well." Um, and um, yeah, the uh, look of him when he gets in is kind of a, a nervous <clears throat> smile. Um, and he says, thank you, sir, thank you. I'm heading to Baiko. Uh, you're probably passing through. I'm heading to Baiko myself. Really? Uh, what is, what, what, what's your name, my good sir? Oh, uh, my name's, uh, uh, my name's Jonathan. And he kind of reaches his hand across the, uh, the divide. Hmm? I'm not shaking. Arthur? Jonathan Arthur Keller. Haynes. Jonathan Keller. Arthur Haynes. Yeah, um, I, uh, got business in uh, Baiko. Uh, not many folks, um, you look like you're uh, Arkhamite, um, I'm assuming. That's right. Not to put too much Not the university? It. Yeah, um, it's actually where I'm coming from. Um, really? Yeah, I uh, do some odds and ends during the weekends um, out there. At the, uni at the university? That's right. What, what, what department do you work out of? Oh, uh, I don't work for the university. I kind of work in the university. He sort of tilts his head and gives a puzzled look. Uh, I, um, I, uh, sell refreshments. Aha, aha, aha. Okay, so you see, you see a look of understanding come across Arthur's face. Well, that's no business of mine, uh, Jonathan. Um, why don't we talk about other things? Sure. As we as we drive, the uh, conversation will probably kind of just be very um, uh, small talk. There's not a it, lot. Well, to... Maybe Jonathan will try to. Oh, we just something happened. What just happened? Uh, we Ooh. just swapped. We lost. Uh, that one. I was going to call him a different name, but that's Chandler. Not... Chandler. Okay, hold on, folks. We're gonna have a yeah. slightly double Brent face um, for a couple seconds here. Jeez Louise. No. <laughs> we are having fun today. Hold on. Sorry. Let's move it's okay. Andy here. Worries. And we'll just put some double Brent action there instead. Okay. So it's mostly small talk. He really doesn't have much to kind of um, add. I mean, I guess Jonathan should probably talk about small talk like the weather, but, you know, that sort of slips straight past Arthur, who says, Have you read much of the uh, Theosophists, my, uh, do you know of them? Fascinating stuff, I must say. He, um... You know of Crowley? He, Adam Volvatsky? He very much does not. Um, and so he will listen, but there's... Even even though it is very engaging material, and I know that me personally would be engaged, you're basically lecturing a person who has no interest. And uh, well, so if, 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 
for Arthur, this is not necessarily new territory. Fair, fair. <laughs> Some of my students would rather not be <laughs> more than fair. But uh, I would well, say... Yeah, I didn't get it. It took me a minute. That was great. That was fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. I would say that the, um, the main thing that um, you notice about him is that he is very polite in his reception of the conversation. And he, he's trying, right? Like, there is an effort that he's trying to kind of engage with the material. But what you very clearly understand is, is he's not interested. Um, sure. It, it definitely devolves to a point where, in, in light of the conversation, um, he kind of leans a bit more to explaining, like, his uh, business. Um, and he explains that uh, a friend of his has a farm in Baiko. Um, and he lets him use some of the property um, for certain crops. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he doesn't say which or who the friend is, obviously not trying to incriminate his friend. Um, but it's a short enough ride, um, and you get to Baiko. Uh, you probably left early morning and arrived around mid-morning uh, time. Um, in that last stretch, um, I would say that it is most likely the case that you got stuck behind a bus, um, which was aggravating. Um, and, uh, you see the bus kind of go towards Midtown, um, and, uh, Jonathan <clears throat> asked to be dropped off just right at the front, like, right at the entrance of the town. And we're like the only two cars on the road or something. And <laughs> Arthur would say, such traffic. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing about the bus, <laughs> the thing about the bus, too, is like the uh, stretch, uh, the stretch between, um, I would say the stretch between like the uh, Miskatonic to Baiko, that stretch there, it's kind of the, the train and it kind of interloop at a couple of points. But the, the road is mostly just like a dust path that's kind of running alongside the train, which is like kind of neatly ordered with gravel and the like. Um, so the road isn't, it's, it's kind of narrow. And some spots you kind of have like from where the farmers were watering their crops, like a bit of muck, you know, but uh, drying and baking in the, uh, the sun. But it's mostly the case that like once you get stuck behind that bus, there's no going around it, right? The bus is taking up a good quantity of that road, and if someone were to be coming on to you in traffic, the bus would have to kind of like careen off to the side, or the person that they were coming on to would have to careen off to the side to allow for the bus to move. The bus is of a sizable nature. It is occupying the entirety. So yeah, it's not a lot of um, good road out here. Like you're used to kind of neat highways, you're used to streets. This is very much different. Um, but yeah, you get here, um, you drop Jonathan off at his requested location, mm -hmm. and if, um, he pops out, he'll say, um, well, uh, thanks, Professor, um, really great talk, I'll, uh, remember a lot about the, uh, philosophicals and what have you, um, if, uh, you're around town and you find your way to the bar, um, I might be there, and I'll buy you a drink for the ride. Very good. He, uh, heads on, um, into town, um... And uh, do we have a notation on resetting stuff? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, then we'll shift gears to... Uh, oh, how did that happen? Okay, one second. Just fixing another thing. Brent, you just get to be in this one box. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how you snuck away into the other one. But speaking of Brent, um, <laughs> so how does your day start in the early morning? It's going to be a sunny one. It's summer, so I'm not much of a farmer myself, but how, how would how would you go about it? Uh, definitely got to get up, like, pretty much like crack of dawn, throw on the overalls and the uh, pretty torn up little shirt, and the worn out boots, and then uh, probably go out, check on the crops, make sure everything's growing good, feed and get some milk from the cows for breakfast, and then uh, 
after doing all that, he'd probably just uh, ride into town and see what else he can get into. Okay. Uh, see if he can earn a little extra money than what he's making selling his tobacco. Gotcha. Um, so you're going to be heading into town pretty early with your uh, Model T. Um, so that's a good insert for um, Arthur Haynes' entry into the space. Um, not a lot of cars on the street, um, as mentioned. But in town, there are a couple of cars kind of parked here and there. Um, one of them kind of pulling in just about when you kind of maneuver around enough to kind of get past the, the bus and park somewhere. The bus seems to park itself. Let's go ahead and shift the map here. And, oh, of course not. The uh, bus seems to park itself just near the general store. So you kind of enter in from the south side and uh, come into this location. Bus pulls itself to the general store, allowing you kind of, uh, you know, where to go. You can see the, the town hall very clearly, very big building, um, I believe in the handout. Hold on a second here. Uh, Averbury, Villa, Village Hall? Yeah, Averbury Avenue kind of ends with this very large kind of dominant uh, building off in the distance there. Uh, but you can see, like, throughout the strip, there's all different kinds of small shops and such. Some of them are closed. Some of them are boarded up. Uh, but Averbury Avenue um, <clears throat> appears to be, like, the main kind of uh, place for it. Um, yeah. Um, any kind of designated location you want to start off in in town? Um, in most of these small towns, village halls or town halls or whatever will also double as kind of like a... Um, uh, chambers of Commerce. Uh, and okay. They, they can also double as like um, libraries and like places where. Oh, nice. Shipped. And and if I went into st planning to stay overnight, which I guess is what's happening, the rooming houses would be a place to go, or are there other places? Rooming houses. Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So I guess uh, I would uh, stop at the village hall. Okay. You park there. And not too far away, you see an old Model T kind of park. And um, Brent, you kind of described your fit. Um, describe a bit about your character's look uh, as well inside of those clothes. Uh, he's very small and scrawny, but he's pretty quick. Uh, and uh, like, if you like look at his face for too long, you kind of realize he may have gotten hit by maybe two or three cars. Uh, <laughs> but it's fine. Uh, <laughs> two or three? Yeah, but uh, he does. Uh, he does pretty good with uh, talking to people. He doesn't seem to have much of an issue talking. It's insanely and specific. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love it. So, got a thirty. I don't know what to tell you. For um, hold on. For you, um, Raymond, it definitely looks like the guy who just pulled up to Village Hall, not too far away from where you parked, uh, is moneyed. Uh, he's a city folk. Um, he's out here in Baiko for whatever God knows reason he's here. But he's wearing well-to-do clothes. He's driving a pretty well-to-do car. Not the most well-to-do car you'll see in this setting. But for right now, it is top tier. Right? Um, so you would see this gentleman kind of making his way over to Village Hall. And honestly, Arthur, I don't know if your character would even regard him like as being someone who's going mm -hmm. to approach you. He looks like a farmer. <laughs> Like, it's okay. So, Brent, for point of context, is Fizzoli's level classy. <laughs> it's nicer than his Model T. <laughs> it's getting dangerous in here. Which is Olive Garden level. <laughs> are we rating Fizzoli's over Olive Garden? I guess we are. I guess <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> we That's really a sad don't. decision you just made. I mean, we really don't <laughs> like Olive Garden. We <laughs> So I would get out of the car Actually, heading towards the village hall, and I would see Brent's character, Raymond, in the distance, right? Well, kind of like uh, maybe Am like I? 30 or so feet away, you know, like uh -huh. definitely within shouting distance. If Raymond wants to try and engage uh, Arthur, it's up to you, Brent. Again, you do not have to interact with player characters if you don't want to. Uh, considering uh, Raymond was going to look for side jobs, he knows he probably doesn't get much business talking to people who already have a set plan. He kind of looks for people that are lost. And obviously, if the dude drove into town and is walking directly towards there, he's probably not lost. So he's just kind of going to wander around see if he can find anybody that's lost to try to 
okay. convince them that he can help them. You park in a place that's like you know reserved for kind of in town parking, but you know that a you know a couple uh, blocks away, if you take the walk, people are about to start unloading on the you know off the the motor carriage because today is Shadi. What's today? Day of the week. You get to decide because you're in charge. Uh, it's Friday. It's going in the weekend. Friday. Friday is the day that the motor carriages arrive prominently in Bico. More often than not, they just bypass Bico. They do not come here. But because Friday is a bit more of a loose day and like there's not a lot of travel, uh, because most folks are staying where they're at. Um, Mondays and Fridays. Fridays. Mondays and Fridays. Okay. Coming in for the weekend with family, and then you go back to work in the cities. Perfect. So Fridays are a day that the motor carriages will come in a bit more often than not. So um, knowing that, Raymond, you're kind of heading over in that direction. And Bianca, knowing that, uh, <laughs> you obviously understand that uh, arrivals are important. Yep. <laughs> there are two girls. Um, at, I'm standing across the street where the motor carriage stopped. Two girls are greeting people when they get off the motor cage and ask them if they can help them with their bags. Which two do you think, or do you want me to choose? Uh, the, uh, doesn't matter. Just two. They're always going Lorraine and Audrey. They're not, yeah, they're not allowed to be by themselves anymore. Only going in pairs. Yep. Not since last week, right? Yep. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so Lorraine and Audrey are kind of, um, uh, over there. Um, so Otmar, um, as you kind of pull up, um, and uh, <laughs> he's not walking away, is he? No, 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 no. I'm okay. Here, I'm here. Okay. So you are getting off of the motor carriage. Small town. I will show you the picture again. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're not, you're basically, this is like your perspective of the town. If you look at the map behind it, uh, Avebury uh, Avenue, you're basically parked right about here near the general store, right? Okay. Um, so um, yeah, there are a couple of girls who are kind of like, you know, greeting everybody. They are, um, you know, dressed um, uh, nice enough. Um, but, um, being from New Orleans, you kind of have an understanding of what they're yeah. engaging in. Um, they're being helpful, but at the same time, they're looking for tips. Um, and, uh, you kind of secure your cases. Um, yeah. Um, Bianca, you would see that most of the folks that are kind of getting off of the motor carriage look like they're, uh... Uh, locals, um, there's like three or four that you might know by name, right? Names aren't important here, though, on those. But there's like three or four who you don't recognize. And then there's a fifth one you certainly don't recognize. And it's very strangely dressed for most people, but not for you. Looks like someone who might be walking around the streets of New Orleans, not up here in Massachusetts. Um, he's wearing a straw hat. And the described outfit uh, for Otmar, as it was described. Uh, what is Bianca wearing? Um, white, very sheer dress um, with a a large, a, a more um, padded cover on. Hmm. Um, she's a larger lady, um, definitely squared off a little bit. Um, kind of going off the main bad guy from Resident Evil, the newer one, but also a little bit more. Oh. Weird. Lady, oh, the, Lady Dimitrescu. Yeah, okay, but well, she's um, larger. I'm, she's not. She's not the even soldier, still. She's larger. Hard as a rock. Uh, yeah. <laughs> does she have a hat? Yeah. Hell yeah, we love Dimitrescu's hat. Um, okay, perfect. But kind of the sheer outfit. Yeah. Um, but, White, but not like. Yeah. Um, not like you know. Not uh, see through. Nothing yeah. like she's not. She's trying to be debonair, but also it's hot. It's right. summer. Absolutely. Um, okay, so yeah, you would see those individuals. Does anyone like catch your attention enough to the point where you want to interact with them, or are you just watching carefully? Right now I'm just watching the girls, making sure that they're making good choices and making sure that nothing looks crazy. If I saw the one that looks like they're from New Orleans, and if I can tell they're from New Orleans, I might step inside and watch from the window. I find it hard to say that the described outfit would be from anywhere besides south of, like, yeah, like, it's you would at least be able to very quickly determine southern. Yeah. Like, okay, then I probably wouldn't. I wouldn't care then. I'd okay. be like, it's whatever. Some people come up this way for work. It's not uncommon. It's not common, but it's not if uncommon. They're passing through, I would probably tell the girls a new one. Go see if you can get yeah. something from them. 
And so, yeah, they're basically kind of, um, you know, over there uh, hanging about. Um, as you kind of secured your cases, Otmar, a uh, woman walks over to you, a uh, yellow kind of um, summary dress. Um, older lady, I'd say probably somewhere in her, you know, late 30s, um, but still just like a very uh, uh, gorgeous uh, woman. Um, kind of walks over to you and says, oh, hey there, stranger. Uh, you, you new to Bico? Uh Yeah, I am new to Bico. Uh Just oh. passing through at the moment. That's wonderful. Um, do you have somewhere to stay, or are you just passing through, taking the next motor carriage out of here? I'm hoping to take the next one out if it doesn't break down. Well, that's great. Well, if you need any help and need any information, or you need um, you know something to do while you're here, and seems to kind of hover on that to-do word, like, yeah. heavily in the sentence. I may not have done it. Um, she uh, kind of, like, leaves it hang and then kind of walks away. If you want to... I would go I would ask, uh, this is for you first, how long before the next carriage takes off do I know? Like, so, Bico is your final destination, wasn't it? No, you said Boston. No, no, Boston, Boston, we already skipped through. Sorry, you okay, kind of okay, died. Okay. And there, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. So you would have hit Boston. That scene that we had where the girl kind of disappeared into the crowd, that was in Boston. Okay, so Bico is my final destination. So, yeah, actually, I would. You are in I Bico would, now, yeah. Then, sorry, I, I retconned that little part. No, I okay. would say that I was here for a moment and that if I would be interested in anything first, it would be a bookstore. I'd ask her if she knew where a bookstore was. She points down the road. You see a big sign that says books. Well, then I'd be quite interested in going there and meeting anyone. And if you know the shop owner, I would love to be introduced. She uh, very coyly uh, kind of walks away from you a little bit, then turns her head over her shoulder, and then puts out her uh, arm like she's wanting you to kind of take her arm. And she'll walk you over I, to the bookstore. So, Yeah, I, I mean, he would um, and would... Just walk over, not thinking much of it, because in in the south and where he's from, people would lead you around. It's very it's not like in the north. It's very just people just show you around. It's southern hospitality, sure. church folk type, just show you around. So he wouldn't think much of it other than just kind of walking along. Uh, uh, Bianca, you would see that uh, Audrey... Probably, you know, your more uh, seasoned uh, veteran um, here. She um, skillfully uh, secures the person you pointed out and kind of gives you a look like, you know, like, got him. <laughs> yep. um, I would flash her sign basically saying, hey, go ahead, keep running with it. Yep. And then I would also flash the other girl behind her and say, stay, like, basically saying to shadow her. Yep. Um, not to interfere, but keep an eye on her, stay together. Okay, so um, at that, I'm going to go ahead and end that scene with Otmar by having Otmar roll a... Um, something I'm bad at again, I can feel it. Yeah, definitely. I'm trying to think what would be good. Like, perception is broken up quite a bit in it. There's, like, a lot of different stuff, but, like, just casual kind of, like, um, seeing if you're being kind of shadowed. Would that be spot hidden? No, spot hidden would be, I like... I think so. Okay, you do? I mean, it, it, you could use it as a catch-all. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't see anything that's like, kind of like, yeah, spot hidden. We'll go with that. Go ahead. Okay. Is she not trying to hide or anything? Wow, I keep rolling poorly. Cool. That was um, a good one for me, too. You are enamored by her. The small talk very quickly picks up, um, talking about the weather, talking about, you know, everything. Um, she um, is very flirtatious. Um, <clears throat> I'm obviously not going to role play that. Um, I don't want you to. Well, I mean, if you want me to. No, <laughs> no. I said I don't. <laughs> even, even, even still. She, she is very flirtatious. Um, she's not, like, super handsy or anything, uh, but she'll do coy things like, you know, straighten your collar or something, you know, like small little things that kind of, like, uh, could be mistaken uh, to someone as, like, she's interested in me physically. Um, if you yeah, because uh, again, from down south, like that would just be something an auntie would do. Like right. Some old, la some lady walking around the town would 
make sure you looked good, would make sure you were straight as you were walking through the towns. Audrey would probably get mad if you thought of her as an auntie and she knew that about this interaction. But we're, we're, so she, you said you said mid thirties or over thirty. I'm late thirties. Late thirties. So we'd, we'd be we'd be contemporaries. Yeah, yeah. Um, so she will take you to the bookstore. Cutting the scene there, we're gonna go ahead and go back to um, Arthur. Uh, you're making your way up to Village Hall. Uh, mm -hmm. It's It's got a, a, a decent number of steps before kind of coming up to a big brusque wooden door with like a uh, brass handle, you know, the large, you know, the bar handles. Uh, glass, but it's like frosted glass, so you can't really see in. Um, you kind of open it up inside. There's a, a, a distinct smell of kind of just aged, um, like, books. Um, it's just very kind of earthy smell and kind of just aged smell. Um, there's a decent number of people in here, more than you thought you'd probably be walking into. A um, good dozen or so. Um, and a person walks up to you immediately, a younger man, um, says, hi, welcome to Baiko. Uh, welcome to the Village Hall. Can I help you with anything? Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, I am looking to find out some information about uh, a parcel of land and its owner. Oh, uh, interesting. Okay, yeah. Um, hold on one moment here. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't secure the custodian, okay? Thank you. And he walks over to the back, um, has a conversation with a woman seated at a desk, uh, kind of heavily punching away on a uh, typewriter. She looks up at him and then kind of nods, kind of does something to settle the typewriter. I don't know how typewriters work. Uh, <laughs> She's effectively control essing. Um, however, that works on a typewriter. <laughs> she just stops. <laughs> oh, is that because how it works? There, because there is there, yeah. There's like ink on a page. <laughs> I'm obviously doing a bit. I know how typewriter. I know. Work. I know. Um, she leaves, comes back, and the she comes back with a older gentleman, probably in his fifties. A uh, wizened kind of uh, look to his face, well kempt kind of uh, you know just beard, not a massive one, just like a you know what I got, um, and then white hair kind of slicked back, uh, walks up to you and says, "Oh, hello, um, I am uh, the custodian. My name is uh, Benjamin Bear." Say hey, Arthur Haynes, Professor Arthur Haynes. You're uh, from Arkham University. That's right. Uh, uh, is it Miskatonic or? Uh, I... what is what Miskatonic? Is the University of Miskatonic? Yeah, Miskatonic or University. Arkham? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm from Miskatonic. Uh, uh, uh Department of uh, Antiquities. Uh, I've come across an item that's part of our special collections, and I'm here to trying to ascertain its uh its provenance. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I've been able to track it down to Biko. Uh, and uh, a possible connection to a plot of land. He nods and says, do you happen to know the address of the property or about what the name of it is? Uh, so I would give the name of the owner, which is Adam Gowden. Oh, Adam Gowden. All right. Well, um, we do have um, records... Uh, 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 from... Am I able to... Oh, never mind. Go ahead. Continue. That's fine. I'm sorry. What's your question, though? Well, I was going to ask whether or not I could ascertain anything from that facial reaction when his name was mentioned. What do you think it was without rolling dice? Uh, a look, a pained look? Yes. So you definitely feel that he doesn't like Arthur. That would be the kind of giveaway there. He doesn't like Arthur or he doesn't like uh, Adam? Or Adam. Sorry. What did I say? Arthur. That's me. He loves Arthur. He's talking to you. He doesn't like yeah, Adam. Yeah. Too many A names. We need more R okay. names. This game doesn't have enough R names. <laughs> so he has bad feelings about Adam, the owner Adam. of the property. Okay. Correct. Yeah. At his mention, he was kind of like, yeah. Um, he says, Got well, it. we have all of the records for the property up until Adam acquired it from the Rebels. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have much uh, as he is unwilling um, to allow our um, uh, representatives from the town um, look over the property um, in the last uh, few years. You say the Rebels? They're the original owners? Oh, that's right. The uh, property was originally um, built up and um, was owned by an individual named Gabriel Revels, who was a famous uh, craftsman, a woodworker. Um, quite notable. I believe some of his um, 
uh, books on the craft are actually at Miskatonic and are used by their uh, woodworking classes there. What would uh, would would Arthur know of this, or probably not because it's a separate thing? Okay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> do you know anything about the craft uh, department nope, nope, in nope. your? Nope. college <laughs> cool. um he would say uh yeah well i'll take you back we'll go ahead and look through the records and you'll spend the next are you but i was gonna say thank you that's very helpful i like that uh but do you know if there are any remaining revel ancestors still in Biko? well as a matter of fact uh raymond revels um is um and you see him stop and go well that's him right there and points outside to the guy who is now kind of walking um, towards the uh, motor carriages. The gentleman you saw outside and didn't really regard. Thank you for your help. I'll be back to look at those books shortly. I'll... I really appreciate it. And then he turns around and he and he jogs away. And he yells, "I'll pull them out for you, so you don't have to pull or pull them out the archives." <laughs> okay, you rush down the street. Um, so Bianca, from your location, kind of across the street from the motor carriages, you can see Raymond coming down the street from town hall, and then you see this guy who looks very well to do, kind of rushing down the street and. Otmar, this is about the time you're about to turn into the bookstore. So obviously a guy running down the street is not a common occurrence. So especially when they're well-suited um, individuals. Um, did we describe that you two knew what each other looked like from like uh, telegraphs and stuff or from like um, uh, posts regarding we your... We would know each other's names at least. Yes. I don't you're know how much fresh. past that. Okay. Yeah. Right, right. Photography less likely. Okay, perfect then. Uh, so you don't recognize him, but yeah, you see a guy rushing after another I guy. See, I see like an academic sprinting at someone. Who does not right? look like an academic, yes. Arthur does, yeah, Arthur looks like an academic. He but... sure does. <laughs> okay. Well, I would I would genuinely turn and look at that and watch that interaction. And uh, uh, she kind of stops to watch it as well. And Bianca, you're kind of catching it from the side, like over here. Um, you would see that... Um, uh, Audrey with uh, Otmar, and then um, Lorraine, not too far behind them. Kind of just casually stopping as well. So, Raymond, someone's rushing up on you <laughs> as you're heading over to the motor carriage to help some folks. Uh, yeah, I'll turn around and kind of like, not really meet him, I'll just kind of stand there and wait on him to catch up to me. Okay. Uh, he would... He's like he's trying to hold on to all of his stuff. He's got his his his, his, his you know his uh, leather briefcase on a strap, and he's making sure the books are in it, not falling out. And he he gets there, and he's kind of he puts his hands on his on his knees, and he starts. <sighs> he goes, uh, Ray Raymond. Yeah, that's me. Who's asking? Uh, the good fellow over at, at the village hall said that your last name is Revels. Is that right? Has been my whole life. <laughs> a smart lad. I knew. How old is Raymond? Seventeen. Okay, a smart lad, for sure. Uh, quick as a whip, sharp as a whip. Anyway, um, I'm <laughs> looking into. <laughs> I imagine Arthur asked that in character. <laughs> yes, yes. And Raymond's yes. like, "Whips aren't sharp." <laughs> uh. Anywho, um, looking for some information about an artifact that I required that I think might be related to your great grandfather, great great uh, Gabriel Revels. About that, my dad didn't talk about him much. Do you have any information, like, in your family library about your ancestry? Arthur would say, hopefully. Uh, I didn't know I could own a library. Oh. I didn't know I could own a library. <laughs> <laughs> I love you already, Brent. <laughs> and then, um... Fair enough, Arthur would say. Uh, 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 um, 
are you perchance interested in uh, are, are you perchance ple presently employed uh, run a little farm run a little farm would you have time for as they say as the young kids say a side hustle what do you need uh, I need someone who knows the local color of Biko to help me with my research. And you seem like just the fellow to do it. And he takes out a 50 cent coin. Which is a lot. And he hands it over. And just so you know what that means, uh, this is the value of 50 cents in 1927. It's worth almost $9. Thank you. That's a cool, uh, too cool, John. It's cool uh, tool that amortizes. Would uh, would Raymond know that the thing he has in his house was made by his great grandfather? Or no, he would. Uh, yeah, Raymond, would be like, well, if you want to follow me, I got some stuff my great grandfather made. If that'll help you. Excellent. I knew you were the right person for the job. He pats him on the shoulder. Let's go. So uh, how far away am I? Not too far away. Uh, I would say you'd be able to hear a bit of that. Okay. You'd probably uh, see the coin. You, you'd see oh, the yeah. coin, probably. Oh, yeah, no, that would definitely that be was, the, okay. right, right. But, yeah, I'm definitely listening to what you're yeah, saying. Raymond's not a quiet talker. He, for sure, is, like, almost screaming, but, like, it's just at the top of his voice because that's just how he talks. Just yelling at Arthur. He's just like, yeah, dude, okay. Yeah, my granddad. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Bianca, do you want to act on that or no? Uh, not currently, no. Okay. Uh, Otmar does. Okay. <laughs> he, he heard that, and he sees someone showing money in this town. Yeah, he you definitely heard Raymond's parts, for certain. So, yeah. Yeah, and I hear someone say, you can own a library, and I see an academic talking to him. I want to also know what that's about. Why would he be asking some random 17-year-old, some, like, very young kid about a library? You walk Again, he was going to a bookstore. You walk over, you're approaching as they're kind of uh, rounding down their conversation or about to start moving. So Arthur and Raymond, you would see, gentlemen, and would you tell um, your uh, consort to wait, or would you have her come with you? You can come with me. Okay. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind. I'm not, I'm not a very shy person. She. Uh, I'd, walk, I'd walk right up to Arthur and reach out my hand and say, I would say, Otmar Ar Pignette. Uh, it seems like someone else who uh, would be interested in some books. And maybe, I don't know if the name would spark something in him or something like that. He's a part of the order. Part of the order. Okay. So it's a name so you've Ar seen. Ar uh, Arthur would look confused for a moment, not recognizing as sort of in this setting. But then after a moment, the name sort of comes to him. And he would make... He would flash the or the, the signs order, which is some sort of intricate finger movements or something like that, and just wait. Yeah, Otmar would immediately do it back and get very elated that randomly there was an order member in this town. So they do the Macarena, and uh, obviously Audrey <laughs> and Raymond are both like <laughs> confused. I would look over after the order symbol was flashed, and I would look at Audrey and be like. Ma'am, not to waste any more of your time, uh, but I feel like I might have very different business tonight. And I would look over at Arthur and say, uh, I would like to join whatever you're trying to do. I've never seen one of our members sprint so fast. She is definitely going to try and stay with you. If, do you oh, wish... no, if, she, if she glances back at me to try to get a, um, a read on it, I'm going to flash her to leave him alone. Let oh, him okay, okay. Yep. Yeah, so she, she kind of has a moment where she's, like, ready to start, like, contesting. Um, but she will turn and walk away. I would also pull out, like, a quarter and give it to her, tell her to go get lunch on oh, me for okay. taking me to the bookstore. Um, right. says, especially since what he told me, what, 50 cents was worth? Yeah. I, I'd easily pull that out and throw it, flip it over at her and be like, go get yourself lunch on me. Sorry for wasting your time. Thank you for trying to get me to connect with the books. She's a bit crestfallen, um, and, uh, yeah, she, um, as you described, you're very handsome, so, uh, <laughs> she, um, obviously was not just in it for the, the, the buck, I guess. Uh, <laughs> she'll leave, but she'll head on over to Bianca, and you'll see that, um, uh, Lorraine will also do likewise. I would look over at the young 17-year-old and be like, well, hello as well. Um, Otmar Pignette, not trying to be rude, 
Um, and I don't know how, again, we discussed in Session Zero, I would be, like, almost a literal foot taller than Brent's character. Than, yeah. Uh, what is your name? Um, Raymond. 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 And so I would just look down and, like, stick my hand out to him real fast. That's what you can say. Yeah. Uh, I'm Raymond. Uh, we're about to go back and check out some things my grandfather made that he was interested in if you want to come along, too. I'd look over at, at Arthur for permission. I'm not trying to be too rude. Uh, it is good to meet you, Otmar. You are quite the forward fellow. Um, I, 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 I certainly wouldn't mind if you accompanied me, but then I think we should, you and I should talk privately uh, about our, our, our shared research interests. Well, as you start making your way back to the town hall, uh, Bianca will engage with you kind of before they get to the finisher on that, uh, just in case you want to kind of do something to get involved. Uh, but Arthur, you're walking back towards your car, and Raven's walking back towards his car. Raven's yeah. car fits two people, but it could fit a few more if you throw them on the back in the bed, which is basically just like a wooden kind of like slatted mm -hmm. kind of section where you throw mm -hmm. shit into to move it, right? Yep. Your car could move all of us if you wanted to but raymond would be leaving his car here which might not be something raymond wants to do so you could drive separate and you could have a conversation with your fellow order member in the car as you follow raymond to raymond's home well i'd like to go separately because i'll be coming back here for the evening to for sleep mm -hmm. and I, yes i would assume so would i so i would happily ride with arthur if you would allow me to and i think in the mm -hmm. in the initial conversation we had discussed that you had met one of uh bianca's girls uh arthur who kind of leant over the call or the the mirror right she doesn't recognize you but could that that's what we discussed am i wrong i'm trying to remember how we got okay. the mirror how we got the mirror it was one of the was it Bianca herself, or was it one of the the working girls? I think you're, it was it was one or the other. Yeah. It was one of the girls, and then Brent actually comes to the establishment. Yeah, Brent. Brent doesn't have a favorite, um, like some people are want to do. He just is having a good time, you know, whatever. Right. He's probably with the youngest one. I would get no. That. Doesn't care. Doesn't care. <laughs> he doesn't care. He. he, he just, are you sure? Yeah, I'm 100 percent sure. 100% sure. He does not care. <laughs> He's there for a good time. He's not there for a long time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and can I redact what I said of having the girls leave? Oh, yeah. If you wanted to stick around him, sure. Yeah. But I'm, yeah, not saying no, he, I'm not saying he does it a lot. I'm just saying when he comes, he doesn't have a preference is all I'm saying. <laughs> like, it's like, whatever. Let's He's go. He's definitely not a regular because he ain't got a lot of money. But yeah. he does get... You know, okay. Well, he just got 50 cents. Which is he did of... just get 50 cents. <laughs> That's not going to be enough. <laughs> Should I go buy food or... <laughs> or... <laughs> or... <laughs> or... <laughs> so, um, what I would say, though, is is we had discussed that Arthur is familiar with one of them. And it's not Audrey. It's not the girl who came up with Otmar. But as they're moving towards Bianca, the girl that was shadowing them, Lorraine, you recognize as being the girl who had the mirror and brought it to the university. Got it. So whether or not you want to engage with that is up to you or not. Um, Bianca, those two will come to you. And we discussed, Arthur, you're going to uh, basically state you'd like to ride separate. Are you taking Otmar with you or letting Otmar ride with Raymond? Are you Ar asking Arthur? Yeah, Arthur, yeah. I'm sorry, I would take Otmar, but I would want to talk to Audrey if I could. Okay, so I was going to flip to Bianca's side of it, because they came back to her quickly, kind of looking for, like, do they go back to the motor carriage and try and get some of those workers, or do we re-engage? No, we, we pulled them back when we saw, one, the money being thrown out, and two, those weird hand signals. There are two people in town that she doesn't know. They're throwing out money, and they're giving weird hand signals. So that means something is organized and something is weird. And she's wondering... What happened to her other girl, and is this involved? Are these people throwing money around. So we're not messing with them, or do we want to engage them personally? I'm wanting to pull back for right now. Okay. And then we're going to go a different route. Then we go back to Andy's side of the table. You were not aware of that vibe. 
Got so it. you do see uh, uh, Lorraine, whether or not, or sorry, hold on. Audrey was the girl who came mm-hmm, with mm-hmm. Otmar. Lorraine is the one you know. Do you wish to try and engage Lorraine? Uh, yes. You start walking towards them. So Bianca, they walk over to you and you say, just hold on a second. And then you look past them and you can see that Arthur's walking towards you and the girls. I'll, I mean, I will let him approach, but I'm also standing in the back, just kind of... Do you have a gun? (laughs) Yes, I do. Absolutely. Are you, are you handling the gun just in case? Because again, it sounds like you're in defense mode. Yeah, it is, it is readily pullable, but I'm not there You're not drawing it out. Gotcha. Correct. I'm assuming it's like one of those nice, like, uh, like thigh... Mama bears getting ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's also like one of those, like, thigh kind of, uh, holsters, you know, that's like hidden under the dress. It's something grab quick, but is also hidden. Yeah. Got it. So he approaches. Then he says... And Bianca... Lorraine! She kind of nods. Yeah, do I know you? You you do. Um, you were up at Miskatonic, uh late recently weren't you you dropped uh, something off about a month ago yeah yeah and looks so, over to bianca bianca you'd be aware that she's is this new news to me okay no, I was you, you, you are aware that she sold something up at the college uh it was a uh, something her mom gave her okay i wanted to find out more about how you came to to acquire that piece my mom gave it to me I, uh... do you know where your mom got it from in town um she said it was uh part of gabriel's stuff um one of his fancy trinkets that he made and gabriel's kind of like the favorite son of Baiko, so the mention of gabriel um is typically not in relation to his last name for bianca so you know of gabriel most folks do gabriel was a woods <laughs> craftsman he was a fancy schmancy sh- sh- artist um and, and bianca this is something that will click for you as you're thinking about it you remember that Arthur, or not Arthur, Arthur fucking A names, Adam, the guy who absconded with one of your, your girls, his place is the old Revel's place. Mm, so yeah, now I'm, yeah, okay, that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just started yeah, sh- no, it's... shooting Andy's character. <laughs> you see that her face Why? is <laughs> Um... Yeah. Then Arthur would say to, uh, to would say that that's that's really helpful. Um, do I am I able to get a sense without really asking what uh, the I'm sorry what is the character I'm talking to Is it Lorraine? Lorraine, yeah. It's mom, what kind of what would, would she also working for Bianca? No. I would stop her and say, "Excuse me, dear. Uh, as we know." information with to go around and you're taking up a lot of my uh friend here's time so if you want some time and want some questions answered one you should pay her for her time she's not this isn't just getting out information two you're you're new in town so let's go ahead and uh get get through some pleasantries first before we start giving uh the meal let's get some appetizers how, how <laughs> mad would you say she was? Because you said earlier in session zero, if she got mad enough, her southern would come out. Well, I don't think Chody's going to do accents either. So. I'm not going to do I'm that. Saying, I'm I, I, we said we weren't doing those, so I'm not yeah. going to yeah. try. No, it it definitely came out, though, right, Chody? Like, oh, yeah, yeah no. Yeah, it's yeah. Okay. When she That's got stone face, she was kind of, you could hear it. And I would, uh, I would perk up at that. That's hearing someone from my area. <laughs> but I wouldn't cool. intervene. Ooh. Arthur would say, "I mean, I mean, no disrespect, ma'am. Uh, I, uh, I have what I came for." He would give Lorraine a quarter and walk away. Um, Otmar, as they kind of move about, I'm assuming Bianca kind of moved forward and Lorraine kind of backed away, right? Yep, when she that would, happened, Bianca would come in front, Mama Bear. Which means Bianca's on done. the floor. So I would like for Otmar, because we discussed this in session zero. To go ahead and just roll me a it's, it's a, a, it's like a memory check, but I don't know what that would be in this setting. Um, so many skills. Um, History. You can just roll straight um, stats, right? You can. Uh, go ahead and roll me an intelligence roll. 
Uh, Mark. Nice. Happily successful. Okay. Got it. Yeah, so when you hear that, you kind of go, huh? And you kind of look over, and then you see her face, and you recognize it. You recognize the face. You're not able to place a name with it, but you remember seeing her, this woman, um, in kind of like your youth, um, in newspapers with a lot of kind of mention of uh, rum runners and uh, criminal syndicates in New Orleans. I would, I would walk over again. I'm, I'm, I'm a big. I'm just really trying to get Chody to shoot one of you. That's. that's... I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, I'm a very large character. I'm so used to in like in the south and everything that people just are like very happy to have a large, like working guy around and everything. But like, I immediately would go over and ask the very pointed question of, "Where are you from?" <laughs> to Bianca. Uh, she would say here and there, uh, very kind of nonchalantly. Um, she would, she would definitely smile and walk closer to you. I would, I would very quickly say, not many people uh, that I wouldn't recognize many people, and I wouldn't recognize many accents. But up here, yours stands out very clearly. Uh, you ever been near ports in New Orleans? Uh, when he says that, she smiles and she walks closer and she goes to the ports. Um, she's going to slide a hand and try to pull out a switchblade and put it next to his crotch and say, you don't know me. <laughs> uh, Go ahead and make a slide of hand check. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Uh, so you do not see it happening, but you then feel like a, a press of metal against your inner thigh. Um, and like, cause you know that like cutting the crotch is fine, but if you cut that nice part inside of yeah, like the, the static, uh, yeah, right. the blood's going to fly everywhere and that dude's going to die. <laughs> so no. you place the knife there and say, you don't know me. You'll never know me. Walk away <laughs> and forget me. Oh, this is also a good time to uh, get paid for your time. <laughs> oh yeah. I'll take her. Yeah. I'll absolutely. Take his money. <laughs> I would, I'd very clearly say, I mean, like, I don't mean no harm by it. It's just weird to see a familiar face up here. I don't You didn't. care. Eh, okay. I would, I'd slowly back up. I'd just be like, it's fine. Again, Omar also isn't used to people pressing him. It's not something that happens to him. Um, especially from a, even though a larger, but like a much smaller, like, person than him would not usually be so aggressive but knowing knowing that and seeing the reaction could i make any role to try to pinpoint where that might because like that sort of reaction to saying like oh are you from oh the, the psychology from so yeah psychology would be a good one i think uh you're trying to measure why that's happening right you're trying to yeah. kind of incite what's happening in this instance so yeah psychology is solid okay Oh god, I keep rolling so high. Can't yeah, roll no, I, he wouldn't. He wouldn't be able to put two and two um, together. But he would. Really I will say, it. since this is so point blank, like it's a duh moment for me. I'll allow you to go ahead and roll a bonus dice. Okay. Don't have to be one ahead. I don't. I don't even think. Yeah. No, no. good. Yeah. Close though. Close. So yeah, you're dense. Um, you're a bit kind of <laughs> dense in this. Like you do not know why she's being so defensive, but you do realize, like you're a smart enough man to realize that. That could have very le well led to you having died. Like that's not a yeah. that's not a, a oh I'm being that was a genuinely like vicious threat, right? So you're yeah. kind of backing away and aren't understanding what's going on, but no one else saw what happened, and she keeps telling you in the instance you do not know me, you do not recognize me, and you're just kind of like okay uh, and like backing away. Bianca, yeah, I would. I would happily walk away and be like, well, I guess you don't we want to leave. be known. Yeah, leave. I'd put the knife, I'd slide back in and me and the girls would Oh, leave. it was gone before he stepped away, right? Like, you're not showing yeah, it was a, else. it was a, you're going to feel that and then it's like, it's mine. It's, you don't know. No one else needs to see it. Yeah. I would happily tell Arthur the moment we walked away that I have a strong feeling that that person is interesting. <laughs> I have a strong feeling that that person is very interesting. <laughs> Arthur. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Arthur, yeah, I mean... Uh, back, back behind everybody, Raymond's like, you ready to go? You ready to go? <laughs> I know, man. And do you talk to Raymond about what that just happened? I mean, I, 
I wouldn't bring it up. Because, Raymond, you know Bianca. She's great. I was, about to say, I was about to say something very crude. <laughs> I did not say it, so we're good. If, if Arthur wants to talk about anything that just happened, Otmar will just kind of quietly sit there and think for once. Okay. If nothing happens there, then you two get into the one car, and Raymond, you get into the other. Raymond, you lead. Your car's probably a bit faster than uh, Raymond's car. Raymond's car's a bit better built for the train, though, so you kind of make your way to uh, Raymond's home. Because, um, yeah, Raymond, um, you know, not a large farm, uh, but it's out there. Um, Arthur and Otmar, quiet of the car, sitting there. Uh, so tell me more about your research, Otmar. Uh, Otmar would very quickly dive into the fact that he has been researching um, old uh, well he would dive into the fact that the research has brought him up here because he was looking for the evil book from the witch trials and he was heading up north for that um, but his research as a whole has been trying to prove and get things working in the uh, southern communities to accept uh, how things actually work in the world. And he would leave it to that level of vagueness, that how things work. Because um, he knows his northern compatriots don't always fully agree with how he thinks this works for the Order. Hmm... Yeah, the Order does have some kind of um, Abrahamic ideals, but uh, I don't think it's uh, something that is 100% agreed upon across the board in the Order. At least not down south. Yeah. Mm. He always stroke his beard as he's driving, <clears throat> and he would say, Are you familiar with the work of Ledbetter? His book on clairvoyance is just fascinating. Have you heard? Uh, I mean, probably, yeah. I mean, I would have definitely taken, if uh, it would have been pushed to me, I would have 100% would have read through it and looked through it. My guy's all about the books and about um, literature. He would say, Gledbetter argues that uh, certain, certain occult practices uh, can when done in ritual community, uh, break through the veil of this world to see things as they really are. Are we talking about similar things? I would love for no more than to be able to see how true that is and how things truly work in this world. Uh, and it, I would put a huge smile on my face. The Hermetic Order uh, locally has done such rituals um i'm sure you'll be able to attend one i would be more than happy question for me where's the mirror did you bring it with you arthur or is it oh yes it's he has it he has it wrapped up and in, in his satchel so it's in the back right uh-huh okay Omar would ask what we're doing because he did jump in the vehicle didn't really question much because <laughs> <laughs> again, seeing another order member, that is huge for him because where he comes from, again, he works on the docks. Driving Education to... isn't even the finest down there. So, Driving out to some else... outstretched yeah. farm in the middle of nowhere, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, you you are an enthusiastic fellow just to sort of jump into the midst of, of my research. Um, I'm not sure. Well, how about let me put it this way. Um, if you help me with, with, my, with my research agenda, currently I could at a later time, help you with yours. Um, how does that sound? Sound most agreeable. Um, and then he would explain that he's looking to uh, find more information about the providence of a certain uh, item that he thinks has occult significance. That's connected to, its origin is connected to this town. And specifically to uh, an ancestor of Raymond. One brothel frequenter. I would say the Dash Boy that we're following is a descendant of someone of great import of importance to us. Okay. 
It seems not, so. Not that that wouldn't have been my first guess, but I'm more than happy to follow up on any lead. I've followed up on much worse and much more infested leads. Well, I think uh, perhaps young, young uh, Raymond will surprise us. We'll see. There's that kind of moment where uh, Arthur's forced to kind of quiet down because he's very seriously and sternly focused on the road. It's a bit bumpier out this way, um, you know, a little bit more just clodding. Um, it's dry and cracking from the sun, um, but, you know, there's a lot of water being kind of displaced out here because they're trying to make sure crops are nice and, um, you know, wet for um, the, the end of the harvest at the end of summer. I can't think of what crop would do that, but it's that one. Um, and uh, passing some farms, you move to a smaller stretch, um, and you'd see Raymond kind of pull off the road and kind of enter into a long stretch, um, you know, past a windbreak here and a small little spot there, and pull up to a farmhouse. Um, enough space for you to park as well. Um, our Raymond, you get out. This is your house. You just invited two intellectuals over. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Raymond would, uh, get out, and once they get out, he'd, uh, go and open up his door. And then, uh, kind of just lead them into where the desk is. Okay. Okay. He would, they would, you know, I, Arthur yeah. would follow. I would follow right behind. He would have a journal and a pen in his hand. You, uh, um, walk in, um, uh, and you see the vanity. And basically everything you know to kind of, uh understand about the pieces it has similar kind of uh, uh, portions of it uh, the mirror is very you know baroque it's uh, you've got the angels at the top the symbolism of the Noah's Ark um, however uh -huh. this piece is different in that the Ark on the uh, full mirror that you've received pictures from um, Henry from it is closed this, at the top of the vanity, the Ark is open. And there are no animals out and about at the bottom of the mirror. The vanity is very kind of simple, the f you know, kind of oval-shaped flipping kind. Um, and the desk is very kind of simple and basic. Um, but the drawers are the interesting part. They are f covered with uh, water shapes, like wave shapes. And there are small portions inside of the waves where you can see it very kind of intentionally uh, carved into it were small, like almost like animal cracker like shapes, right? Inside of the water spacing on the, the legs and also like the framing and cabinets of the vanity. Are any of those shapes recognizable in form? Yeah, it's like animal shapes, right? So, like, okay. I'm trying to think of, like, animal crackers. Like, you can tell they're animal. Elephant. Ass. Yeah, sure. Uh, like, it's very hard to, like, once you have an animal cracker, unless it is an elephant or something, to, like, this might be a cow. Or this might be a hippo. Sure, I understand. Yeah, that. Sure. So, Arthur is sort of sketching the mirror and then going in close and sketching, trying to get a capture of the finer details with the shapes inside of it yeah um and well, in doing so he's gonna pull out the well, mirror quick, before, yeah. you, before you get there raymond where <clears throat> so arthur comes and goes wow very interesting pulls out you know a leather bound journal starts kind of drawing details in the pages uh where are you standing while that's happening uh i imagine it's probably like not in my bedroom it's in like the main room if my house has more than one yeah. room yeah, absolutely. And uh, so Raymond would probably be standing at the door frame while watching him do his thing. Okay. So are you kind of like behind him or like off Yeah, behind him? him. Okay. So kind behind of in him, the reflection kind of, behind. of the mirror. Got it. I yeah. think I'm about to be attacked by a mirror. Shit. And Otmar, where are you? Before while... that happens. Yes. Um, it, uh, absolutely. Like, I, I know you guys, he said he drives slow. He does. So I have something that I'm going to do that might interrupt this. Go. But I just want to make sure you do your stuff. Give it to me. I love okay, that. as soon as they leave, uh, start driving away, I'm going to go um, to the sheriff's office. Okay. I'm going to walk in, and I'm going to uh, see both of them there. I'm going to go, James, honey, sweetie, Carrie, down at the room and board. I'm going to pick him up, kind of guiding him. Carrie at the room and board saw some guys come in from the new uh, the new 
uh, group of people, and she seems really worried about them and seems kind of scared about them. I think you need to go down there, and she's guiding him to the door, and check that for him. Make sure she's okay. James is like, yeah, yeah. Um, was it that fancy car that drove in towards town hall? No, it was somebody on the, the main bus. Just go check on her make sure she's okay. I really appreciate that. You would have saw that Arthur drove the fancy car there. <clears throat> yeah, no, that's fine. I just okay. want him out. Yep, James leaves. I, I told her, I told, specifically told him it's not the fancy car. Oh, um, okay. I close the door behind him, and I go and I sit down, and I stare at uh, Bill. Bill and kind I say, of, Ar- what's going and on, I, Bianca? Say, we need to talk. I know you don't like me, and I understand why. We'll get but, the flap in those gums. Say what you got to right. say. Uh, we got a new couple coming in, and have you found out anything on Shirley yet? Well, we went over to Arthur, or Adam's goddamn A-Names. <laughs> we went over to, he says that. He's like, goddamn A-Names. Uh, we went over to Adam's farm, and we uh, shone our lights in there, looked around. Um, there ain't no one there. Um, we have been trying to uh, work with the mayor and securing um, a warrant. Uh, it seems to be the jurisdiction of uh, local government to allow for us to kind of go in and check it out. Now, I didn't see anybody. You don't have time for that. I didn't see anybody in there. I didn't. I didn't see anybody in there. You know, Bianca, my hands are tied. I get it, but I'm telling you, I see some people with money coming in. They're flashing signs and stuff, and they took that farm boy out to his house. He's out there, and you need to go out there and mess with him or something. Take the boy. Take uh, take James. He's buddies with him, and go check on him. See what's happening. Go hang out with his buddies. Have dinner with him. But there's something going on, and you need to do it before I do something. Sorry, I'm not trying to do accents. Stop. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, he says in response, as he's kind of getting up, putting on his gun belt, he says, uh, "I'll go follow your friends here that you are so worried about, and ask them some questions. See if they're doing anything bad to Raymond or whatnot. I'm assuming that's who you're talking about." But I need you to understand, I can't go breaking and entering into that house. You're not going to break and enter, and you're going with James to see his friend. Two separate houses. Oh. Adam's house is uh, the Revels' former home. Adam bought it out from Raymond's dad. But they also said why we were talking that they were looking for old stuff. Yes. So yeah. Th- so yes. We're going. Are, we're I, going to Raymond's new house, and we're going to go and investigate that. That's what's happening. What he's telling you is, is, I can't go into Adam's house. I can't do that. But if you can get some folks who are interested in doing it, you know I'm more yeah, than no, happy. Yeah. No, me and my girls are going to go while he's there. Yeah. Being. We're happy to look know, the so other we're way. We're going to go look. Yeah. Okay. So that's what so we're going to do. You muster up. Um, what's your, um, cash money rating? Higher or low? 11, it's low. Yeah, you don't have a car. Um, so, that might be... I would ride be... with him most of the way, and then get out when it's close. Okay. And then you and the girls would walk. Well, you'll be... The I thing, don't need the girls. The thing is, is if, if that's the case, and I'll explain, Raymond's house is before Adam's house, or former Ray, Revel's house. So, if he's going to drop you off, he'll have to do so... Either like giving you a good two mile walk, <laughs> or he's got you in the car. Right? He stops and he checks on Raymond and these two folks you're talking about, and then he gets back in the car and goes with you to the house, drops you off, and leaves. That's those, fine. Those are the options. Okay. That's fine. So he's gonna go ahead and get to his car. James is over at the motor carriage talking to people because that's what you kind of tricked him to do, and he says, "Eh." It's kind of weird stuff we're doing, so I'm going to go ahead and just let him do what he's doing. Uh, <laughs> gets into his car, um, and he'll drive you out towards uh, the farm. Now, he's moving at a faster clip, so basically the scene that we just described in about a minute or so is when they will arrive on the, the they'll arrive behind you. Okay. So, Otmar, you're kind of uh, off the side watching Arthur engage and kind of note oh, no, I would drive. be I would be damn near over his shoulder like okay. I would be I would, again I'm a very forward person I'd be as close as possible to him. Okay. as close as he would be comfortable and doesn't like kind of push me away and uh, you said that you had secured the satchel kind of like the the wrapped mirror out of the back of the truck or back of the car and brought it in with you right right so after i've been sketching the standing mirror for a while i'd want to take out the hand mirror and unwrap it 
and sort of compare its uh, woodworking to the standing mirror. Okay. Before we get to that point, I need Raymond and Otmar both to go ahead and make sanity rolls. Oh, no. Mine's not great. I am. Mine's good, and I still failed. Oh, Otmar nice. killed it. Good job. Thank you. No, no, no. Your roll was bad. Rolling high is bad. Oh, now, uh... Um, no, I succeeded, but... Yeah, um, hard success, yeah. Uh, I thought Brent said I rolled good, but I failed. No, I said I have a good score, but I rolled bad. Oh, got yeah. you. But uh, what I'm going to say, though, is, is because you're used to the mirror, I'm going to give you a bonus roll on this, and... Um, this is hey. this is Arthur or who? Oh, this is Raymond. You're not rolling at oh, all, Raymond. Arthur. Okay. You're not. You're you're too busy drawing the details. You're not looking directly into the mirror. Got it. So Raymond, um, as you're watching that happen, um, you're in the mirror or watching your reflection walk up behind Arthur. And what kind of weapons do you have in the house? I just got a simple uh, shotgun or rifle, whatever it be, around the time. Yeah. Just Somehow you have secured that in the mirror reflection you place it behind arthur's head and you pull the trigger and his head cleanly gets scooped off of his body in the mirror otmar same thing but there is literally a beat in this process where you can feel arthur's remains hit you and you kind of huh, and then kind of oh. i would i would immediately grab for where i could see rain Again, Raymond's the, all the way back over. Yeah, yeah you grab yeah, it, that like location. Where the there's, mirror would be. There's like, nothing there, and Raymond's kind of looking at you like, and you both look at each other, and he's like, you, you kind of understand the thing you saw in the mirror happened for both of you, and Arthur has no idea what's going on. So there wasn't a jump scare that would alert me to that. No. Well, there, yeah, uh, Otmar kind of oh, uh, like when he was reaching over, but Arthur, you're kind of like, you know, book in okay. hand, none the wiser. I would walk immediately to Raymond, like very forcefully towards him, asking a couple very pointed questions. Well, before up. we get there, as you're walking towards Raymond, the door's still open, right, Raymond? You didn't. Oh yeah, I never shut it. Yeah, and the windows are nice and open too. Uh, you can see uh, the cop car, uh, Otmar, pulling up into the parking space. So great. And. Uh, I'd like for you to go ahead and make a... Because you're not trying to be noticeable, right, Bianca? You're not coming out of the car. No, 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 no. Yeah. Go ahead and make a spot hidden, uh, Otmar, since you're looking out that way. Will do. You recognize that Bianca is in the cop car, and she's not getting out, but a law enforcement officer. And to describe the the, uh, uh, the guy we're talking about here, um, so Brent, you know him. Uh, his name's Bill. Um, and, uh, he looks like, uh, the, the cop from Stranger Things, uh, you know, nice, thick beard, big frame, probably the only person that you've seen who is as tall or taller than Otmar, very large guy, kind of just starts brusquely walking in his brown uniform straight up to the house. And he says, Raymond, you all right? And he kind of has his hand on his sidearm, but he hasn't drawn it. It's still in the holster. But... Raymond, you do know he fancies like old western style folk, and you know he's pretty good on the quick draw. Yeah. I am for now. You know these folks? <laughs> Just met them in town. For now. You walked up to me intimidatingly, huh? We I didn't. I that, just, right? I gave you money. No, the, cop, the cop did. <laughs> the cop walked up intimidatingly. He's scared uh, of the cop, <laughs> not oh, you guys. Okay. Obviously, there's reason to be scared of everybody, but he's focused on the cop right now. This tension is here. <laughs> so he, he walks over and he says, you mind if I come in? Come on in. He uh, walks in. His hand is not on his piece. Um, but again, uh, Raymond, you do recognize that the uh, um, uh, holster strap is uh, it, it's been clicked open. Walks in, looks at you two and says, you two are... Uh, not locals, and a uh, bit of a concern was raised about you folks. Um, Arthur would turn and say, concern? Yeah. Um, and he's got his, his journal open, and anybody looking would see sketches of the the standing mirror. And, 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 uh, and he would reach into his satchel and pull out his uh, faculty ID, and he says, I'm, I'm Arthur Haynes, 
uh, PhD. As you're kind of getting your, as you're kind of getting your gear together, you were basically halfway through unraveling the paper around the hand mirror. Are you setting that on the vanity, or are you kind of trying to hold that while you're doing everything? Oh, I would put it back into the satchel while I was grabbing my okay. ID from you it. Put it into the satchel, and then you kind of go back to that, and mm -hmm. you pull out your ID and stuff, and he'll walk over. Take sure, it. and I'll hand it to him. Yeah, takes a look. And at I'm it. Say, I'm here doing research on uh, some. Some 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 uh, items of historical significance. Okay. Oh, you drove uh, you drove Johnny in to town this morning, didn't you? Yeah, I did drive Johnny, and he's quite a character. He said he'd meet me at the bar and buy me a drink if I saw him over there. Yeah, well, that's great. He uh, hands you your um. And this is uh, this is a traveling companion, Atmar. He is here from out of state. But we belong to the same academic society, um, and he is assisting me in my research. I would, without hesitation, go. I've never seen a cop ride with a passenger. He uh, holds his hand out and doesn't even seem to acknowledge the question. Do you mind if I see your information? And do you have your um, your ticket? I would have my ticket still on me. Yeah, he asks for him and takes a look at everything. If you hand him over. Yeah. I'd see no reason not to. I'd ask him again quite a bit louder. Um, I've never seen Yeah, I heard your question the first time. Uh, he says just dismissively and hands you your stuff back. Okay, well, um, there's probably nothing really in effect here. I, I, I apologize for the interruption. We've been a little bit uh, tense around Baiko for a couple of days. Last week or so, um, a disappearance happened not too long ago. And so a lot of town folks are... Uh, you know, uh, a bit concerned. And you've heard about that, Raymond, right? With, with Adam and everything last week? Yeah. So, yeah, we just have some problems, uh, folk-wise, and uh, a lot of people are not very trusting right now of uh, outsiders. Now, I'm going to keep an eye on you, personally, and I hope you don't mind. And it's not that I don't trust you. It's not that I don't believe you are what you uh, say you are and you're doing what you say you're doing. It's just that uh, I got a job to do, just like you got a job to do. Yours is investigative work with, uh, well, that shit. And mine is um, making sure everybody in the town is safe. And so I'm going to do my job, and you're going to do yours. And uh, as long as you're paying Raven to hear a nice, uh, handsome fee for the work he's doing, I think everybody's happy, right? Absolutely, officer. You could find me uh, staying at the rooming inn. And I've already made a contact at the village hall, uh, where I'm doing some research, too. You very, have a good day now. Very good. You as well. And, uh, Raymond, if you have any problems, you just let us know, okay? Oh, ready. He uh, kind of stops, looks at the mirror for a bit. Huh. What's the darndest thing? And then kind of turns. Ask another question. Shoot. And be, and be like... Why would so, you do that? I, no, I'm not trying to be nice. I'm not from around here. Um, I would say, uh, I didn't know that the, because I would I would have caught on that Bianca was in charge of the girls, right? Yeah. So there's no way I wouldn't have. Uh, I would have. I would very quickly say, what is the brothel owner riding with you for? He just seemed to continue to walk. I'd let him walk on on that one, but I just wanted to say and it loud enough for everyone to stop, hear. Stops at the door, kind of looks back over at Otmar and says, um, you know. I uh, like intellectual types. The reason why I like them is because they're really stupid and they fake like they're smart. And that's just, for me, is just the biggest hypocrisy and the most enjoyable thing to watch when they flounder. So you go ahead and have a great one. Raymond, be extra careful with these two, okay? And if you have any problems, let me know. And he walks out. And he says, uh, he stops, he goes, you want this shut or you want this open? I leave it open. All right. <laughs> and so, small, nice guy. Small town hospitality. Mm -hmm. He walks back brusquely, kind of like you can tell Bianca he's not in a good mood. He gets back to the car, opens the door, sits into it, and shuts it. I get what you mean, but yeah. I think it's just because they're city folk and not because they're uh, ne'er do wells. He starts the car over. Or turns the car over, starts the car over, turns the car over, and backs it out. Um, She's fuming. She 
she's like one of those things. I know there's something up, but she's shutting up because she. He explains junkie. in detail everything that he gleaned from them. So Arthur Haynes, PhD, works at uh, Miskatani uh, University. He, he says, "I saw the papers myself." He's confirmed. He also was the person who drove Johnny into the place. And you would know that Johnny uh, works for another farmer whose name I haven't made up yet. They have a pot farm, um, <laughs> right? Um, so you are aware that, like, you know, he didn't, he was nice enough there. Um, and then he'd also mention um, the other individual, Otmar's uh, individual paperwork checks out there's no way he could have been involved with uh, something that happened a week ago because his bus ticket was from this morning and it's from boston there's no way so he just basically gives you the full detective readout from a sheriff telling you that they're weird but they're not involved and then he will drive you and the two girls out to um the uh, out of the farm when he get out of the car i make a very I say I appreciate your help with this and to the point where he knows that she usually doesn't talk like that and like she really does mean it that she appreciated the quickness and now, the, the it's gonna be a, of help. It's going to be a hell of a hike back. Um, I know you don't have a ride back. I can't wait for you. Um, I got to get back into town. Obviously um, <laughs> that one uh, yokel was cool. already asking questions. So I'm going to head back to Raymond's um, after a little bit of a run around out here, just checking around. And I'm going to let Raymond know to come pick you up. Okay? Sounds good, honey. Thanks. All right. Don't make yourself at home. Just get what you need and get out. Oh, and we're then... not getting anywhere. We're just walking along the road. We just want to see the countryside. That's it. That's it. Love Thank that. You, Drives off. <laughs> And as he's leaving, why couldn't the other guy fucking get the hint? <laughs> just inquisitive. Back inside, they leave. You're kind of like all just like as they're driving off, like what the fuck? What the f Raymond especially is like, what is happening? <laughs> but how do you wish to proceed? I once things have calmed down. I do what I plan to do. I take that mirror out and I unwrap it, and I'm looking at it in comparison with the standing mirror. Yep. Are you looking at the the framing or the mirror, like reflective I'm surface looking, itself? Well, the mirror is steel, right? Which itself yeah. is a strange thing, and the mirror, the standing mirror, is also steel. So I guess I would look at that some, but I'm primarily focusing on the wood carving, which seems to be the thing that Gabriel was known for. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. So you'll realize that the mirror you're looking at in the vanity is not as perfectly reflective as the one you have on your person. Raymond, not to kind of, you know, be mean to you or hear anything, but there are probably some bumps, some knocks on the, the vanity wood frame that weren't there at the beginning, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. He just kind of throws his stuff on there when he needs And the mirror, being a steel mirror, it's probably got that nice kind of, like, crust of like dark rust where the polish is kind of ground out you know but you can time. still see yourself in the mirror yeah 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 the center portion is pretty solid right it's very still kind of high polish he's cleaned it right but some of that has caused that that, that rusting at the bottom because you know right he's cleaning right, it with like, the liquid right he's cleaning it with water he's cleaning it with right like, right right you know soap and it's like that's not the, that's not what you do. So so yeah, just just to play around, uh, Arthur would take his hand mirror, and then he would turn around with the other mirror behind him, and so he'd look into the hand mirror back at the other mirror. See anything strange? Oh my God! You're just asking for it. <laughs> like, uh, so go ahead and do me a favor and make me a sanity. <laughs> Why'd you bug the cop? Let me just wave the two items. <laughs> Let me just wave these two very cursed items. <laughs> what? I don't know they're cursed, right? Fair. True. Fair. I'm just trying to figure out what's what. So uh, my, I, I close my sheets, so I'm hoping that give me a second. No worries. No worries. No rush. You're just asking for it. That's not a good sign. Uh, my sheet is not loading. I'm not sure what's going on. Let me try again. There we go. Uh, sanity roll. Uh, success. Oh, 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 that's a, oh, that's a failure. A big one. You rolled a hundred, Andy. What? Yeah. Oh, I rolled a hundred. I'm sorry. I thought I rolled a thirty-seven. Never mind. I rolled a hundred. 
And that makes so sense. For, for, for everyone at home, uh, that's not good. <laughs> big numbers big numbers are big bad. No, no, it's not. Um, what happened? So let me first look at the mechanics of what happens, because that's, that's important, right? So I think that, um, if I remember correctly, be... I become temporarily insane yeah. if I lose the... Well, it depends on the sanity point. So... Actually, the what damage. is the number of what is the number of sanity points that I lose? If it's more right. than a certain number, then I could become temporarily insane. So I think you either I think you roll that. Yeah, and I'm looking at what it would be. So I am thinking that this will be a situation where I am rolling. Okay, so you are going to lose a total of four points of sanity. Okay. So and four points the, is not enough yeah, of a the trigger. Threshold is five, it looks like. So um, for it to start yeah, getting hold on a second. wonky. I'm uh, just going to put this in the, in the chat so we can all have it as a reference thank point. Thank you, thank you. Hold on a second. Yeah, I'm looking at the sanity points and sand rolls. Um, that's exactly what I'm looking at, yeah. Um, cool, cool, cool. Five or more, yeah. So I, I lost a lot of sanity points. Um, but it has to be in one instance, right? Yeah, one instance of five will definitely kind of group you up. But you haven't lost any yet. Um, and the other two succeeded on their rolls and are taking none. Uh, because, again, what they saw was just Jeez. strange mm -hmm. and happened. But it wasn't anything that... like It was something they could tell was wrong, right? Because they were both able to see each other out of the corner of each other's eyes. It was like this weird, like, shared um, uh, hallucination. So but do I sense anything strange? Uh, uh, what you see is the thing that's going to cause this this problem, right? Okay. When you look in the mirror, the hand mirror, or are you using it as you're using it as the focal, and then you're using the vanity as kind of the backdrop, right? Yeah. And yeah. so we're creating that effect where you kind of can see yourself in infinite, like throughout. Mm -hmm. When that first happens, it takes a second for it to kind of like angle right, so that you can see the line of you in the reflection. And what you start to notice is about four or five U's in. Each one behind that one is different. And about 15 or so of them in, they are so different, they appear to be grabbing the ones in front of them and tearing them apart. Oh, and so no. basically there's this vein of just like U's, right? And about a dozen or so in, it's this chaos of just hell beyond that but each one of these strange maladies has your face on it and when so, you say strange malady is it a creature or it, is it's it... hard to tell because they're so far back right like you can't really get a lot of detail and basically it's just the shadow figure but the thing that you can definitely discern because we have a strange pattern recognition for faces in our in our brains you're able to tell that it's you all the way through. And it seems like there are some that are accosting the ones in the line that are closer to you and are trying to move forward. And it's at that moment you kind of like kind of move the mirror out of the, uh, the, the, the pacing, not looking it into it anymore, and kind of like slowly look over your shoulder to look into that mirror. And this is the part that really gets the sanity part the mere reflection is not you. It's doing everything you're doing, and you're moving around, but for a very long time moving past this point, every time you're looking into a mirror, it's not you. Who is it? It's you, but it's okay. not you. Is it one of the reflections you, going back? You are certain it's not you. Like The best way to describe it is, is like you recognize somebody. Just imagine if you couldn't recognize that person anymore and someone had to tell you who it was. That's what's happening. You're unable to re recognize the reflection as yourself. It looks like you. It moves like you. But there's something about it in your brain that's not you. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's fine. Um, is it the... Okay. Go ahead. Ask your questions. I, I definitely want to I'm make sure... I'm just wondering if it's the same sort of sense that you get when people say it's Arkham without an H. Yes. Uh, but... It, 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 something is off about you. Like, it look for all intents and purposes, that is you in a mirror. When you kind of okay. do one of these, 
it's doing it too, right back at you. But the eyes, the face, everything about it, you know it's like, you're pretty sure it's one of the ones down the line. You're pretty sure it's like not you. Like it looks like you, but it's not you. Just like the ones in the mirror chain are not yeah. you. Yeah. What what yeah. it what is that the unknown? Ha ha ha. Yeah. I made this up months ago. <laughs> it can't be something that happened just this last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, um memeing in the uh chat. I saw, yeah. So I would sort of step away from the mirror. Is there any place to sit down? Yeah, yeah. There's I would the, sit down. On, the vanity was being used as a desk, yeah. So there's okay, a, a yeah. nice brusque chair there. And I would sort of put down the mirror in my lap and I'd say, Otmar, I think there's something really, really strange about this mirror. The hand mirror, that is. I would say back, there's something strange about the vanity as well. And I would look at Raymond and I said, did you see it too? Did you feel anything? I mean, I see things in it all the time. What do you? What did you see? Because I, I, I saw something violent. Yeah, or a uh, professor in the mirror isn't a professor no more. I don't think he knows much of nothing now. And I look back at Arthur and be and say, very, very, as like trying to calm myself down because my character doesn't have great sanity, and say, I, uh, I think I saw you die a moment ago, um, right before that cop came in. Uh, and I would look for any any kind of response from like a peer that had just heard that like I'm pretty sure I witnessed your death. I don't know what you witnessed, but I don't exactly know what I witnessed. Something other, you know, other out outworldly, to say the mm -hmm. least. Mm -hmm. You know how I was saying earlier that I was interested in rituals that see through the veil like the seance mm -hmm. uh, it was sort of like that but not in a good way I would take a seat across from her pull a chair in to sit down and I would ask Raymond to do the same so we could let the professor take a moment breathe recuperate uh -huh. Yeah, he's scribbling oh down pictures. some notes in his journal trying to capture what happened in the room and he's dating it and he's drawing pictures and he's asking you to describe what you saw and he's drawing that as well. Yeah, before it's coming. Yeah, I'd very calmly say, um, yeah, it was, wasn't as much as I saw as I felt it. That's what got me. I've, yeah. saw, I've seen many things in my life, but I've never felt something so physical. I felt you on me, and I would like imitate the like head movement of like yeah, jibs, yeah, jibs, yeah. <laughs> and I would I would like like splatter on me. I even checked my own clothing for stains. Now, Raymond, you say that you've experienced this kind of thing many times before. I just look in the mirror and see a different me every once in a while. And it doesn't bother you any. In the first couple times. Do you know anything about Gabriel that you can help us with? Like, Jesus, did, did he write anything? Did he leave any notes or something that would help us piece together how he made this mirror and the other? He was long gone by the time I was born. And my father was too drunk to really talk about anything other than his own self. I want to pause it here. I got about five minutes left, so I got to do one thing before we close it out. Uh, Can I just that, say one more thing? Go for it. I would just say, I think these mirrors are dangerous, Raymond. I suggest you cover that one up. I'm going to keep this one covered up, too. And that's it. Bianca, you arrive at the house. Um, Bill drives off. You and the girls kind of move up on the house. You uh, recognize uh, Deadlock when you see one. Um, so, La... Um, I believe it's this uh, locksmith. I think is a skill. It is. Go ahead and roll that. She's gonna get a rock and throw it through the window. There we go. Uh, like, she knows because she's never lock picked anything before, yep. so she's gonna throw it through the window and just breaking and entering. That's good. Good. Uh, so you smash the window out. You kind of reach in, kind of pull the latch. Are able to pull the um, window up. Go ahead. Back. 
window back yep. of the house. Of course. So. You kind of make your way inside. Um, the second you kind of enter into the space, um, I don't know if Bianca's been around dead bodies before, um, but the smell yeah, of a dead... Fine. The smell of a dead body is present in this house, and it feels like it's uh, currently kind of uh, marinating in the warmth, um, what with all the windows having been closed, um, and it just being kind of left inside to bake. John, you should have asked me. I could have given you a great description of that. No, I'm good. <laughs> um, uh, she, would, she would go investigate. Yeah, tell the girls to stay back. Yeah, absolutely. They don't come in. Okay. Um... You come to the living room, um, which, um, interestingly enough, has a funny history in its naming convention as well, um, which we'll discuss more next session. But you come into the living room, um, and you would see that the furniture has been pushed to the extremities of the room. The floor, a hardwood floor, appears to have a number of markings present on it that look like they have been traced into the wood with, like, a blade perhaps, and then it looks like if they've been filled in with some sort of white substance, which on first look looks like salt, right? Uh, you would see that there is a woman who looks like she is in a kind of distressed state in the center of the circle. Um, it definitely looks like her wrists have been cut from... Is it Sheila or is it not Sheila? She, it is Sheila. I believe that was her name, right? Yep. Um, yep. And then um, you would also see standing outside or sitting outside of the circle near the mantle of the uh, living room, the fireplace. Shirley, not Sheila. Shirley, Shirley. sorry. Yeah. I knew it was an S name. I, I wasn't going to check you. But near there, on his knees, and very much just kind of left there just due to the way he's kind of positioned against the stonework of the mantle, um, is Adam. His throat has been slit. His entire the entirety of his shirt is just a, a mat of like straight flat red, um, just soaked entirely all the way through. And you can see that the blood on both of or the blood from both of them has soaked deeply into the floorboards. Um, yeah, and uh, not too far from her. Um, is a very strange looking piece of metal that's kind of set inside of that center circle. Metal's about uh, eight inches by four inches, rectangular shape, kind of rounded edges. And it looks like it's kind of laying flat. And the f side that's up is like kind of a high polish finish. Um, I would look around for some type of cloth. Um, okay. And I would first go wipe off anywhere that has fingerprints that I touch. Well, fingerprints aren't a thing. Okay, I didn't know. So, yeah, okay. it's the 20s. So then I would I would grab it. It's not a, it's not as common a practice, I don't think, uh, in the 20s. I don't, then I, don't I wouldn't think so. find, I wouldn't look for a cloth. I'd just grab it. Okay, the mirror? You're going for the mirror? Yep, sure, okay. if it's and what I see. That's if I that. know that she gave it to, yeah, I'd grab the mirror. Yeah, and the last Stop. thing I'll say, just to end it, is you kind of pick up the mirror, kind of look at it, kind of confused. No blood on it, not a trace. And you look into it, and for a second, when you see yourself in the reflection, you're almost certain you can see Charlie behind you. But it's just for a second. Ooh. All right, that's where we're going to end this session. Thanks for watching those that did, and we'll pick up next week. Thanks.